Hi there. You are watching a demo of the Quadraphonic Universally Accessible Resource Kit, also known as Cork. This project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts via the nonprofit radio station DubLab, which is dedicated to the growth of positive music, arts, and culture. I'm Kamran V, an arts technologist, sometimes known as Psychic. You can learn more about me at psychic.com, spelled C-Y-K-I-K. The most important thing for you to know for the sake of this video is through several experiences in my life, including producing Suzanne Ciani's live quadraphonic release, I have come to believe that working in quad as your master instead of stereo opens up current and future opportunities in TV and film, spatial formats like Dolby Atmos, DTSX, higher order ambisonics, as well as what is to come in virtual reality. My collaborator Brett and I worked with a team of artists and engineers to develop Quark as a free and simple way to encode four channels of discrete audio into standard stereo, then back to allow the distribution of four-channel spatial recordings across any stereo distribution channel, such as vinyl, like the Suzanne Gianni record, uh, radio, streaming video, such as YouTube, or music services like iTunes or Spotify. I'm going to go through how to use Quark in Ableton, Reaper, and a little bit in Pro Tools. We've made VST3 audio units and AAX versions of the plugin, and for now, it's only Mac compatible. Uh, we hope to make more versions in the future, but most professional studios are on Macs, many with Pro Tools, and large chunks of producers uh, like myself use Ableton Live very heavily, uh, and Reaper is super inexpensive and very powerful and, to me, more flexible than, than Pro Tools. Uh, we did most of our testing in Reaper because it was really, really reliable for testing. Each of these DAWs have their own unique methods to use spatial audio, and I'm sure that others can use Quark. Uh, we just haven't tested them. If you test them and let us know how it goes, hit us up at quark.psychic.com. All right, now for the demo. First off, make sure your audio interface has four outputs. Don't forget that many times you can even use headphones as extra outputs. Some interfaces use headphones as a duplicate of the main output so that wouldn't work but if you have a dedicated headphone output uh, those will work as extra tracks when i first started working on the suzanne Tiani project i actually used an old Focusrite 18 i8 use the two headphone outputs for my speaker outputs and that could control the four speakers very easily with a, a nice dial on the front of the interface at my studio, Bedrock LA, I've been using the Universal Audio Apollo 8 with a monitor volume controller. But with my little home COVID setup, I've been using the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. I hadn't seen it before until a friend was using it. It's not too expensive, and it has this really cool feature where you actually can do this digital cross patching where you can connect two computers or devices like iPad or whatever at the same time to the same interface. Um, and the great thing for quad is it has a way that you can use the volume control on the front to control all four speakers. So really good device. Uh, you should check it out. Second, uh, to connect to those four outputs, you need to have four speakers. My current favorites are the barefoot footprint o1s really amazing speakers for the price and size and and everything but in covid times when i'm away from my studio i actually found these really cool very very small speakers that that have a lot they're the uh, ik media i loud micro monitors uh, surprisingly good for the price and size. It was for four speakers, only $600. Um, of course, you know, whatever you have will work. Ideally, it's great if they all match, but you can get by with whatever you have, no problems. Um, you know, there's tons of information out there how to calibrate your speakers to get it pretty close. 
third thing you'll need is to download the latest version of Quark, of course. Um, go to quark.psychic.com. Uh, this will always be where it is, and it's always free. In this demo, I'm using version 1.0.0. We will have versions in the future with patches, I'm sure. Optionally, like I mentioned before about the speakers, you could get a speaker controller. Uh, they're really helpful for different ways of monitoring and soloing and things like this. At Bedrock LA, we use the Grace M906. It's very, very nice controller, but also in another room, I use the SPL SMC Model 2489. Uh, it's pretty reasonably priced 300 to 500 dollars on ebay or reverb if you use something like the iConnect you won't necessarily need a speaker controller and also i've seen in some of the newer focus right interfaces uh, you can do the same kind of thing of mapping the four channels to the same volume controller For this demo, we are using Reaper version 6.15. Reaper is incredibly flexible, and for the sake of what we're doing, unlike Ableton Live, Reaper's tracks have the ability to be multi-channel tracks. First thing we'll do is set up our master channel. With my setup, I use my audio interface outputs 1, 2 for headphones, and three through six for my quad speaker outputs. To make this work, I'll need to let Reaper know that this is a four channel quadraphonic session, then also assign Reaper's one through four output channels to the four channels of my audio interface, which are three through six. Next, when you're adding tracks, you'll also wanna make sure that these are all four channel tracks so that your surround panner will have four channels to route to. Now, add the re-surround panner through the FX button to VST. Depending on if your source audio is one, two, three, or four channels, you'll set the input channels appropriately. For the sake of this demo, I'll set my input channel to one channel. Next, you'll wanna make sure that the speaker influence setting is set to relative instead of absolute. When you use absolute, the signal can disappear, so definitely make sure it's on relative whenever you're adding this. For our demo, I'll add the tone generator. As you see, when I pan, the signal goes to each channel. You'll also see some nice information feedback to know where your panner is on the right here. If you watch the Ableton Live Quark demo, you'll notice how much faster it is to set up a spatial project in Reaper. Ableton has so many great features, but sadly spatial workflow isn't one of them. Reaper is very flexible in this way. There are many different ways to route Reaper. You may choose on a busing method, but for the sake of simplicity, I just add cork directly to the master. Once added, you can play with the modes. In encode-decode mode, you can listen to a preview of how your listeners will hear the audio once it's been decoded. Direct pass-through mode is mostly how you'll work in your session and be your quad master when you render. The encode mode is ultimately what your two-channel master will be and encoded that way. To export your encoded two-channel master, make sure Quark is set to encode. Go to render in the file menu. Make sure your channels say stereo in the render menu, then render. To export your four channel master, make sure Quark is set to direct pass through. Go to render in the file menu. Make sure the channels say four, 
for quad, then render. This will make a four channel WAV file for your master. This is usually what you would deliver to a mastering facility. There you go, super simple. Cork in Reaper.